The dark web has evolved into a marketplace where hackers get their tools to breach corporate networks. Hello, I'm Eric Chabro of Information Security Media Group, and I'm joined by Avi Rambam. He is the uh, Vice President of Security Solutions for Security Provider Checkpoint. Welcome, Avi. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, f briefly for the uninitiated, what is the dark web? Uh, the dark web is a term that's used to describe a part of the internet that normally is not accessible um, and primarily requires use of an obfuscating browser like Tor, the onion router, um, and also normally requires different levels of encryption in order to both access sites and also participate within it. You've delved into the dark web. What are some of the secrets you find? In? Uh, the dark web is in many ways a online replica of the darkest corners of the cities in which we live. Um, it's where people uh, sell things and participate in activities that they do their best to keep secret. It's uh, selling of drugs, it's participating in slave trade, in awful forms of pornography, child pornography, infant pornography. Um, it's ways in which people connect uh, sellers and buyers of the worst things you can possibly imagine. Um, included within that is also the sale and distribution of uh, breached records um, and findings and details on employees of companies, individuals, their credit cards, their social security number or IDs, um, pretty much anything that someone might want to steal or buy, um, it's accessible within the dark web. So enterprises can have people on their staff look into the dark web. How should they approach that? There are really two aspects to it, I'm sure many more, um, but the two most primary ones are on the intelligence gathering side. Uh, companies should be on the lookout for credentials of their employees that are available for sale, um, applications that might mimic things that they develop on behalf of their customers but are in fact malicious, um, or other um, entities that are either trying to attack them in a targeted fashion or um, that represent their company or the values of their company. So for example, pharmaceuticals um, might have, uh, as bizarre as this sounds, uh, counterfeit versions of their medicines that are available for sale and also um, campaigns that are around uh, phishing into individual people through their Gmail or Yahoo accounts um, associated with drugs that they do manufacture. Or, or even beyond that, from a uh, security perspective, it will be uh, attack tools that are available for people to launch campaigns against individuals. So uh, an, or an enterprise, it's very important for them to have researchers that look at that information. Um, but that in and of itself isn't really the important part. Okay, before we get, go on with that, is it easy to find? Is it just using a search engine, you put your company's name in it? Or, or how, how do you find uh, records of your employees, for example? At its most basic level, yes. Um, so it's possible to go to what are like aggregator sites or commerce platforms. And once you've encrypted your identity and participated and connected and logged into these sites, then yeah, they have search platforms and they have chat forums where you can search, look for information about you. Um, searching is relatively straightforward. You have to create a membership account in some of the marketplaces. But once you've done that, you can look up keywords. It's a basic Boolean search and it's really not all that complex. And, and, and they have no idea who you are, right? Ideally speaking, they have no idea who you are. Um, Say ideally, meaning there's ways they can find out? or. Uh, if a person needs to, um, if they're going to do, operate as a researcher, um, the sites are populated by people who don't want to be found. And if someone behaves in a certain way that they are appearing to be a researcher or someone who's not there to participate in the standard activity, then they can be outed and then kicked off the forums. They use behavioral analytics to discover these people? Or um, they... I, I don't, don't know the actual background okay. of what they do, but for the most part it's sort of human intuition. If someone says, hi, I'm a researcher and I'm looking for this, then the likelihood of someone responding is probably pretty slim. Okay, so uh, there are other ways for uh, companies to get this information. They contract that to other people too, right? They can contract with other people, yeah. But the key really though, the researching part is the simpler part. Um, what really is becoming far more important is leveraging the intelligence that comes from that research and using it in an automated and effective way to harden corporate networks. And that's where we're seeing the greatest push today. Uh, intelligence is always relevant. Um, whether or not it's true or not, it implies something. Uh, right. What makes it far more valuable is when that intelligence becomes actionable. And what we are trying to tell our customer community today is that it's imperative that systems be put in place that are able to input the intelligence that comes from that research, either in an automated fashion or in a manual way, 
but then also distribute protections across the network, cloud, enterprise network, mobile, in a way such that protections automatically occur based on the output of that intelligence gathering. Okay. I know it will take more time than we have here, but can you explain how that works in the sense of giving an example? Sure. Yeah, so and I'll use sort of an example of how we operate as a company, how our okay, technologies fine. work. Um, so um, imagine, if you will, that there is a credential that's available for sale tied to a user. Mm -hmm. And an organization has, as a part of its IT infrastructure, both a LAN, so machines operating on a network and own data center. They might also have systems that operate inside a public cloud, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, whatever it might be. And they would also have users uh, with applications on mobile devices, either corporate owned or bring your own device. So sort of the full range of points of interaction. It should be possible for an organization to leverage detail about a user's credential and then update policies instantaneously so that security technologies that live across all of those environments automatically block attacks either targeting that individual or restrict access to an individual whose credentials have indeed been compromised. Um, and that's exactly where we take it as a company. It, I think it kind of acts as a use case for the type of value organizations should be able to achieve as a result of that type of research. There have been some recent takedowns of some dark marketplaces. Are these significant takedowns? Is it really suggest a turning point or is this something that's like in the real world there are other criminal gangs out there? There are always enough criminal gangs and there are tons of marketplaces. That doesn't mean, however, that if um, one company doesn't get attacked because of the takedown um, or on the other hand, um, if um, one specific person doesn't, God forbid, lose their child because there was a human slavery you know, network that operate within a specific dark web platform, then that's a benefit for clearly that individual family. Um, on the macro level, uh, every time one disappears, another one pops up. And if we have you back in a year or two, we'll probably be talking about similar topics of how to uh, deal with this. This is sort of uh, handling the situation as it is uh, year to year, day to day, rather than yeah. resolving it. I, well, I, I think there are, there's one aspect of it. The, um, the extent to which companies are really willing to take the next step and start automatically implementing intelligence and linking security systems together, hopefully one to two years from now, that's something that many more companies would have begun to implement. So stolen files about customers or employees or malware and things like that, 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 that may, we may see a change. I don't know whether drugs or other types of uh, yeah. situation would change in that area. Yeah, so I, I maybe think about it as, uh, you can subscribe to a ransomware phishing service, for example, through some of these dark websites. Um, so let's say you were to participate right. in such an attack, right? I, as the company that you might be targeting, ideally speaking, I will have implemented controls in the network that will prevent ransomware as a successful attack. Um, either because I have intelligence built in that knows that you're trying to attack me, or I've implemented technologies that just block ransomware. If that's the case, then hopefully you won't use that vector anymore. You won't say ransomware is effective for going after obvious company. Mm -hmm. Instead, you might try something else. And if I'm using intelligence wisely, then I can block it. I promise you I won't go after checkpoint. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Avi. My pleasure. That's Avi Rembaum of Checkpoint. I'm Eric Chabro of Information Security Media Group. Thanks for watching.